The first step in defeating any showdown run comes from your initial draft. Therefore, I went inside of Team Affinity Season 2 and I calculated how many right-handed pitchers and left-handed pitchers each division had. I did this because throughout each showdown, you are going to face eight bosses and the eight bosses are most likely gonna come from the player pool of the Team Affinity Season 2 pitchers. In the East, we discovered that there were a total of eight right-handed pitchers and eight left-handed pitchers. In the final boss, you will either face Nasty Nestor or Jacob DeGrom, so you can take one away from each, leaving to seven right-handers and seven left-handers out of the seven mini bosses that you are going to face. It's going to be selected from that player pool. So when it comes to the initial draft for Team Affinity East, I would highly suggest to just select the best player when it comes to hitting attributes. Don't worry about defense. You might want to worry about speed a little bit or bunting a little bit, depending on your play style, but we'll get to that in a second. For the Team Affinity Central, they have a total of 10 right-handed pitchers. You take away the final boss, which is going to be Ryan Housley, and they have nine right-handed pitchers and one left-handed pitcher in Nick Lodolo to face. So inside of the initial draft, I would highly prioritize in power versus right. If a righty has the most contact in power versus right, then go ahead and pick that up because that will also help you out whenever you do face Nick Lodolo if he is one of the bosses. Last but not least, inside of Team Affinity West, we discovered that they did not have any left-handed pitchers. So when it comes to Team Affinity West, just go ahead and stack your lineup, especially in the initial draft, with just power versus right-handers and lefties if you want, and it makes it a whole lot easier for you. Do me a solid and hit that like button, rest, subscribe button, and notification bell, aiming for 30,000 subscribers before the start of June. Also, check out the description. We might have something you like. Your initial draft will offer you a round of gold perks, as well as a round of silver perks. You will have four options in each one of these rounds. If you see hero time in any of the those rounds, make sure you guys go ahead and pick it up. Why? Because the mini bosses are placed inside of the ninth inning, and Hero Time increases the exit velocity boost in the seventh inning or later. It doesn't need runners on base, and it doesn't need a specific count. Therefore, Hero Time is going to be active at all times. So if you're able to get the Holy Trilogy in terms of Hero Time and get the Silver, Gold, and Diamond perk, it is going to help you out tremendously, especially if your hitters don't have great power. With that being said, the next two that I would ideally look for is down but not out. This is more for the player that practices the two strike approach. The two strike approach is we're not lifting the bat off of our shoulders, we're putting the control down until we get two strikes. Why? Because it works on deteriorating the pitcher's energy, therefore the pitcher will throw more balls and your PCI will also increase which will lead to you having better success at the plate in terms of making contact. Down but not out, if you get the diamond gold and silver version that would be great but if you're able to mix it with hero time that would be even better two situational ones are rally time why rally time because there are some of these mini bosses where you enter trailing one or two runs so the exit velocity boost if you weren't able to get the silver hero time or the gold hero time the exit velocity boost is going to be very beneficial to you now one big piece of advice i always have whenever it comes to rally time and keeping it active Activated is if let's say you have to score two runs and you have 10 outs left and you have a runner on first and second. If you hit a single, I would rather go ahead and only score one and then keep runners on second and third so I can therefore keep rally time activated rather than driving the two runs, have a runner on second base and then rally time no longer serving me the purpose of giving me an exit velocity boost. So you always want to make sure you make it possible that your perks are active at all times. The final perk that is also good situation is going to be bunt cheese. Why? Because if you have a good bunter up to hit and a runner on first base and you just need to score one or score two, let's say for example, if you have a good bunter and you equip one of these perks and you bunt and it's a successful drag bunt, then now you're going to have runners on first and second. And if your second hitter is also a good bunter, then you're going to be able to take advantage of this and have two runners in scoring position with only nine outs remaining, needing to drive either one or both of them in. It's going to put things 
things in your favor. In the central, keep an eye out for supercharged player Luis Robert Jr. You are picking him over anyone. A tip for any draft is make sure you look at inside edge and how it is affecting a player. If you ever have a supercharged player available, you better pick him up. As always, before heading into any boss matchup, make sure you go ahead and equip your perks and adjust your lineup. You want to play players out of position because they will never have to field, so put all your best hitters. I'm going to repeat this once again. Whenever you beat a boss, do not draft instantly. Instead, back out and go and see who is the next showdown boss you're about to face. In this case, it is Robin Roberts. That's a right-handed pitcher. So in our draft, we are going to feel a lot more comfortable picking up either a left-handed hitter or a switch hitter or whoever has the best contact and power versus right, in which this case, it's Vladimir Guerrero Jr. But never make this mistake inside of showdown or mini seasons. If you go ahead and select the same player twice, you don't get them twice. Instead, pick a player that you do not have already. Let's discuss the mini boss challenges that you're gonna have to overcome in order to shorten the deficit versus the final boss. The first one that we had in the East was showdown versus means. You might not be facing means, it might be a different pitcher, but it might be the same situation. Keep in mind that certain perks work better for certain situations, and then at other times, other perks work best. Now in this challenge, we had the game tied with a runner on first base. The runner on first base was our eighth hitter. So I highly suggest putting your fastest runner as your eighth hitter and then putting your best bunter as the leadoff. Now if your best bunter and fastest runner is both the same, then I would still put them at eighth and then putting your second best bunter at leadoff and then your third best bunter at second would be ideal with all your power hitters or best hitters three through seven and then nine as well. Once you complete that challenge, all of the other challenges don't really have anything that I can give you good advice for. For example, Robin Roberts, all I can tell you is that he is a right-handed pitcher, so stack your lefties and power versus right. You're going to be trailing a run, so here rally time would be a great perk to have. But if you were going ahead and facing someone like Al Leiter, where the game is tied and you have to take the lead before recording eight outs, then rally time would not be a good perk to use. So make sure that you equip the perk based on the situation that you are in and also with any of these that your trailing runs or the game is tied and you have minimal outs you want to take each showdown game as if it was a world series game whether it's in real life or inside of ranked you want to take it just as that and you want to be very careful on the pitches you swing at you want to take minimal risks when it comes to running the base pass and you want to go ahead and drive in any opportunity you have. Another tip that can be very helpful to you is if you go ahead and complete the six one, you're gonna be down 10 to 15. If you feel like you can score six runs within 20 outs, then just skip the seventh one and go straight towards the eighth one. But if you want to cut the deficit down because you never know how the CPU is gonna treat you, then I would highly suggest beating the seventh and then facing the final boss at a two run deficit instead of five. When it comes to the central, most of these missions are exactly the same as the East. They don't really change in terms of situation, so there's really no new advice to give you. The only one that repeats where advice needs to be given here was me facing Lodolo, but for you, it might be a different pitcher. We had to go ahead and take the lead with a runner on first base, which is gonna follow the same exact rubric as the East one. It's gonna be your eighth hitter, the runner on first base, so put either your first, second, or third best bunter as the leadoff and second hitter in order to make everything a whole lot easier for you. The West was the only one that had a situation that was not brought up in the previous two showdowns, and that was my showdown versus Eckersley. It might be a different picture to you, but we had to go ahead and take the lead with a runner on second base this time around instead of first base, and there were only six outs for us to go ahead and take that lead. Now, the runner on second base was our eighth hitter once again, so you want to put the fastest guy as your eighth hitter whenever it is the situational moments. Once it's not those situational moments, then you might want to place that guy on the bench or go ahead and place him earlier in the lineup if he is also a good hitter or a high overall card that will be very beneficial to you. With all of that, you should be able to get yourself to 88%, not relatively easily if you're not a good player, but it shouldn't be too challenging. Now you will only need three runs to beat the final boss and you have 20 outs to do so. Keep on repeating the same steps that got you all the way to 88% inside of the final boss and 
hopefully you will be able to complete it to 100% completion without failing at any point. If you did end up enjoying today's guide, please make sure to hit that like button, or subscribe button, notification bell. Also check out the description for the Twitch, Discord, social medias, and how to become a member. Have a blessed day and night. Stay positive, stay safe, stay blessed, and go ahead and put the beat down on these showdown bosses so you can complete Team Affinity 2 the fastest way possible.